I now hand the conference over to Mr. Urvil Bhatt from IISL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of IISL Securities, I welcome you all to APL Apollo Tube's 4Q FY21 results conference call. On the call today, we have APL Apollo Tube's management team being represented by Mr. Sanjay Gupta, Chairman and MD, Mr. Deepak Goel, CFO, Mr. Arun Agarwal, COO, and Mr. Anubhav Gupta, CSO. So let's begin the call with the key thoughts from the management. Thereafter, we can open the floor for Q&A session. Over to you, Anubhav, for your opening remarks. Thanks, Urvil, and thanks, Malika. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. I welcome everyone uh, on the conference call of uh, APR Apollo for the FI21 results. Um, um, like I said, it gives us a, a pleasure to be here um, and discuss our performance for the fiscal of FI21, which was one of the most challenging years in our history. Um, at the same time, I am proud to tell you that Team APL Apollo has converted the crisis into an opportunity and delivered the best fiscal uh, year ever. Uh, we saw record improvements in uh, our p &L, which was driven by margin expansion, our balance sheet, which was driven by the debt reduction, our cash flows, which was driven by the working capital announcement. Some of the achievements I want to highlight are, number one, um, the beta growth of 40% for full year and PAC growth of 50% despite flat sales volume. Um, market share expanded to 50% from 40% in the structural steel tube markets in India. Our networking capital cycle down to eight days from 25 days as we switch to cash and carry model and which has been very well accepted uh, in the industry. Um, and we believe that this should continue going forward. Uh, this, uh, this kind of working capital cycle is uh, best in the building material industry as well. Our net debt, which is down by 80% to 1.6 billion INR from 8 billion INR in the last 12 months. Our value added product uh, contribution improved to 57% in FI21 from 45%. Now, now again, uh, it's, it's a real uh, pleasure uh, to share with you that uh, this journey started three, four years ago uh, when our value-added value uh, product mix was 40-60. Now it's uh, moving towards 60-40. Our ROC jumped to 26% from 18%, and our ROE jumped to 25% from 21%. Um, the company generated uh, operating cash flow of almost 1,000 crores, 10 billion INR in FI21, and uh, free cash flow generation of around 6 billion um, INR, uh, which helped us uh, reduce our debt. Then we also started the group simplification uh, process uh, with the announcement of Apollo Trico Tubes merger into APL Apollo Tubes. This process was initiated in February of 2021 and is going um, mostly on track. Uh, at the same time, we also demonstrated uh, our commitment to the sustainability and ESG compliance for our organization. I'm glad to share that uh, we, uh, we roped in uh, one of the big four consultants uh, who is helping us uh, with the ESG compliance. Uh, over the next uh, uh, a few quarters, you will, you will see that how we are going to comply with the GRI guidelines and, and uh, how we are going to uh, monitor the ESG compliance for the next two, three years. And, and lastly, um, uh, what we worked on is a new market creation, which has been the strength for APL Apollo Group. Uh, towards the high diameter, high thickness tubes, uh, which is one of our most uh, focused areas uh, for the next four to five years. Um, specifically on the uh, quarter four FI21, a uh, few highlights uh, we like to share is that uh, uh, the, the quarter four had started on a very strong note um, um, as uh, the Q3 economy, Q3, uh, in Q3, the Indian economy had started to open up. However, the quarterly sales volume was uh, slightly lower than Q3 because uh, in Jan Feb the markets took some breather uh, after a record momentum what we saw from May of 2020 till December 2020. So, uh, so, um, so, but uh, after 40-50 uh, days of uh, breather, uh, we had a strong momentum which started in month of March, and it continued um, till early weeks of April as well before the lockdown was initiated again. Our value-added portfolio in quarter four was 60%, again, uh, similar to what we had in Q3. So this shows that we are on a sustainable uh, path of having 55-60% uh, uh, contribution coming from the value-added products. 
and and um, and our margins uh, were again um, about 4500 rupees per ton as uh, the unorganized sector continued to struggle due to raw material supply so this uh, this led to strong pull demand in the industry for uh, for products of the branded players and it kept our margin high lastly on fy22 outlook uh, we started q1 with uh, good momentum but the second wave hit the country uh, very badly and we witnessed uh, simultaneous lockdowns which were being announced by various state governments today as we speak it seems the worst is behind us um, and the market should start opening uh, in month of june and july so this this gives us some visibility for the rest of fy22 uh, but we are monitoring the situation uh, very closely at the same time as things are changing on daily and weekly basis that being said our long term strategy remains unchanged uh, for the group which is based on value addition cost control innovation new market creation and brand equity enhancement with this strategy we are conf confident of sustainable double digit growth in uh, non pandemic period uh, with superior net profit growth with this uh, uh, we'll we'll finish our opening remarks and uh, we can open the floor for q and a thank you so much Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambit Company. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi guys, uh, uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, I had uh, you no know, questions around the value-added product uh, basket. Now in FY21, we have seen that you have been able to uh, drive this to uh, the targets that you had set out for yourself earlier. so just wanted your thoughts that in the last two quarters we've seen you know volume decline and flattish kind of volume so as we move to a more value added kind of product basket has the growth taken a little bit of you know uh, hit because of that uh, and uh, you know connecting question to that would be that uh, you know going forward with respect to uh, value added products uh how how do you see uh, you know uh, this changing you know this can this 60% go to like 70% and what actually changed in fy21 at least in the last two quarters that led to a significant spike in the value added product basket hi bro uh, good evening so coming to the first part of your question that uh, given that our value added product mix is improving so does this mean that we are uh, our overall sales volume is going down that's not correct uh, uh bro because 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 if you see that uh, when uh, in q1 f21 when uh, everyone was hit uh, from the lockdown in q2 our company had uh, reported the strongest quarter uh, which was 480000 ton of uh, sales volume and uh, in q3 we saw the economy opening up uh, and we again uh, did 485000 ton of sales volume so we could maintain those uh, record volumes so for right from month of may till december 2020 we had a record momentum okay we uh, we increased our market share to 50% from 40% our rural sales uh, contribution improved significantly um, uh, we were working on the value added product portfolio at the same time so it was it was it was pretty much expected uh, group that uh, the the market should take breather in quarter 4 and it started from mid of january Uh, right uh, the distributors uh, who were sitting on a bit of uh, high inventory levels they 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 wanted to uh, um, uh, cool down their inventory levels and and like i said that was pretty much expected but at the same time what was happening was that the secondary sales were not impacting because uh, uh, because the construction activity in india was still going strong in month of jan feb okay so uh, so we had our years on the ground we we didn't uh, we didn't bother much because we knew that once the inventory levels come down to normalized levels there will be a uh, strong demand coming from distributors at the same time uh, uh, so so after the gap of few weeks we saw that uh, in month of march uh, we had a strong momentum building up 
and uh, and uh, march was very really strong um, okay so so if uh, that breather hadn't come in jan feb uh, we would have touched again for 84 90000 ton kind of volume uh, with this sales mix 60 40 it will go to um, um, 65 35 also 70 30 also we don't see dip in any volume Okay, uh, thanks, Anu, for this. And you know, uh, a question with respect to the growth going forward. So, uh, should we assume a mid-team kind of growth in terms of volumes going forward? I understand that FI22 can be a little bit of hit because of the lockdown, but uh, you know, on a sustainable four or five-year point of view, should we assume that that to be the guidance? So, um, um, so, so, bro. Again, um, I mean, before I answer this question, um, uh, you had another question uh, when you had raised it, uh, uh, like uh, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, value addition um, contribution that can come um, from 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 our company, right? So today we are sitting at 60 40, uh, right? Uh, the uh, the and this is not this this didn't happen in one year, okay? It's the hard work which we have been doing for last four five years. we have been innovating we have been uh, coming out with new sizes we have been creating new markets right so this all, all of this process takes time right and uh, we were continuously investing our time our energy our money uh, towards uh, uh, those objectives and then suddenly you saw that in fi21 um, uh, there is a big jump in the the valuation but if you look at right from fi16 slowly gradually we have been uh, uh, able to improve our mix Like from 40, 60 to India, 60, 40. It's not a one-year journey; it's a five-year journey. It started right in FI 15, 16 with a lot of planning, a lot of investments, a lot of thought process, and and a lot of strategy which uh, uh, which came into play as well. Um, um, so so yeah, um, so so this is like you know pretty much sustainable uh, on sustainable basis. This is not one-year phenomena or two-year phenomena. Uh, this this goes with a very very clear uh, thought process, carved out strategy which we started in FI 15. And 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 on uh, volume growth, see, I mean, uh, um, I mean, we were so excited uh, when we had started FI22 uh, that whatever revenue loss, volume loss we witnessed in FI20, we could uh, make out in FI21, uh, uh, in FI22. But again, um, um, the country got badly hit. So so I guess uh, today, um, I mean, uh, it's difficult to say that what we are going to do in FI22. but what i can tell you is that in non pandemic years right when things are normal our system is well established well oiled to deliver high digit double volume growth with, with, with incremental volume coming from the value added products right so the so so when we say that we are continuously decommoditizing our product portfolio that journey will will continue great thanks a lot anubhav and all the best in the future Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, I uh, actually didn't have any question, but I wanted to place on record uh, my appreciation. A uh, thousand crore of operating cash flow, almost six hundred plus crores of free cash, waiting adjusted for the minority stake, almost sixty-five rupees per share of operating cash. N forty three forty four of free cash uh, is a remarkable, remarkable achievement, and I think it has been strategic and uh, not happenstance. So, uh, congratulations, Sanjay ji, and to the entire team. And then, um, you know, phenomenal uh, across the board on all qualitative parameters, not just quantitative uh, numbers. I think it's a remarkable one. And the quality of the disclosure and the level of details given again deserve appreciation. So many many congratulations. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devrat Motta from Capital Group. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on solid results. Uh, I just have one question. So, uh, you know, from our channel checks, we've been hearing of you know raw material shortages. Uh, can you just talk through, firstly, what are y'all doing to you know kind of deal with 
this challenge of procuring raw materials and secondly what does this mean for uh, you know market share consolidation because i'm assuming if you all are finding it tough to source raw materials smaller competitors will find it a lot harder i would love to hear your thoughts thank you Your question is answered. Yeah, we were we have a long long term agreement with the steel plants like the Tata Steel and the JSW Steel, and we have a long term MOU from last ten fifty fifteen ten to fifteen years. So we have no such as as a big problem. But no doubt in this time when the the country is a shortage of steel. we are suddenly difficult to increase our quantity but uh, whatever commitment we have done with the tata steel and the jsw they are the both are our, our main suppliers we have no no uh, difficulty to uh, take the uh, procurement of the raw material and now we are slowly slowly entering with the say, small quantity with uh, sale and sr also so i don't think is raw material is a big problem for us and what about market share implication for you know uh, smaller competitors uh, struggling to gain market share? i mean struggling to gain raw material up up matlab will your market share go up because of this yeah no doubt is in the primary uh, steel we the smaller player are getting now badly hit so they are losing the market share and uh, the organized and big players are getting more and more market theek okay. hai and ek aur follow up question uh, ये आपका वर्किंग कैपिटल इज इम्प्रूव क्वाइट सब्सटेंशियली लास्ट वन ईयर हाउ मच इज यू थिंक सस्टेन वर्सेस यू थिंक यू नो सम ऑफ इट गोज बैक टू नॉर्मल आई नो आई यू दिस क्वेश्चन बिफोर वुड लव टू योर साथ अगेन दो डिमांड्रोमाइज विद पेमेंट maybe the, the, this quarter uh, due to the lockdown we, so some stock hamara uh, bar sakta hai but we we are trying agar abhi bhi lockdown khul gaya to we cover it perfect thank you so much all the best there was just one point i want to add here is that see i mean this working capital announcement what we have seen this is again this is not a phenomena that's going to last for only like few quarters Okay, it is more like it has become a practice for APL Apollo and its clients also, right? So majority of working capital announcement what we saw is because of the reduction in the debtor days, receivable days. Mm, correct. Um, correct. So the kind of uh, the kind of uh, additional margin they are making on cash discounts, right? Um, then we are compensating them against the low inventory level what they are keeping in their go downs versus what they have to do with other brands, right? And uh, and and the overall discipline which has come. uh um in the industry um again i mean with the second lockdown which took place now that discipline uh, again is in the minds of all the participants right from the distributor to the retailer to the fabricator right so i guess i guess it is a very structural long term uh, phenomenon what we are seeing for ourselves and as long as it is not forced right it is by choice uh, we think that this is going to be sustainable Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anubhav. Thanks, Sanjay. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Malika, you there? Ah uh, yes sir so give me a minute The next question is from the line of Madhav Mardha from FIL please go ahead Yeah so good evening and uh, thank you so much for your time and congrats on very good set of numbers um i just wanted to get your thoughts on a couple of things the first one was um the raipur expansion if you could just give us an update in terms of um, uh, when that plant starts and uh, i think 
uh, how much of a capacity comes in the first phase of the expansion and also the kind of uh, product portfolio that we will be doing at Typhoon. Uh, if you could just give us your thoughts on that. Mother, now again, due to the corona and lockdown, we are behind by two or three months, I think so. But we are thinking that our first production come out with the rifle plant in the month of December. And in the first phase, we are close to 0.5 million ton of capacity. And this is a totally different product of basket, whatever we have now in our baskets. Like in this, we are going for the bigger sections. A 500 square into up to 20 mm for the uh, high rise buildings and the color pipe for the uh, uh, decorative tubes. So, these are a lot of type, type of new addition, new innovation in this uh, plant. And uh, hopefully, we will start this plant in the month of December and uh, in the first phase for Q4 or as a Q1, uh, FI22, we, we are targeting the uh, annualized 0.5 million ton capacity we can utilize. Okay, okay, understood. And the margins, because uh, if these are value added products, the margins would be better versus our existing portfolio? Yes, margins are no doubt far far better than the existing product and uh, you also see that in the future in the results uh, our existing uh, margins are also increasing because our uh, our too much we are focusing on the margins uh, we are not compromising with the margins uh -huh. some part of our community business we are not taking care of the margins and we, we are going for the volumes but in the value rate product, we are increasing our market share as well as margin both because we have we have done lot of lot of innovations, lot of investment in these sectors, and we are getting the results. Uh, very soon you see the results. And 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 and, and mother and mother, these products like 500 by 500 square diameter tubes or color coated tubes, these are the products which are being uh, introduced in India for the first time, right? So so. So given that the competitive intensity is going to be so low or maybe zero for first few quarters or years, so uh, so it uh, it is like uh, it is a clear fundamental that uh, the margin has to be higher here. Good. And my second question was, you know, our balance sheet will be uh, it's almost net cash. And I think in the next couple of years, even if we do the capacity expansion, our balance sheet will have uh, cash building up. Um, so is there uh, any sort of acquisition opportunity that you all see or what do we plan to do with the cash which is building up on the balance sheet? No, Madhav, I don't think any acquisition uh, is available in India of our nature because we are totally innovative type of player. Hmm. We, I, I don't want to go into the again in the community business. Okay. I want to change in, change in the business with the high high margins. So uh, in India, I am uh, totally focusing on the new type of products, new type of markets, new type of distribution network. So I, I don't think so that in India may any good business available. And we have also a good uh, long-term plan of a 4 million ton up to EBITDA margin of uh, 6, 7 rupees kilo in the next few years. So I don't think so that we are going for any acquisition. Ah, it's small little bit. Little bit any acquisition or any job work for us to be a company in any company to be a company to be a job work, we can look in this matter. But otherwise, we have no planning. Understood. So that's, that's very nice to hear. And so my last question was, uh, you know, we've been investing on uh, on building the brand in terms of uh, increasing the brand spending. Could you just update us on what the plan would be for, for this year? In terms of uh, any sort of commercial, the sector that we are planning to do, because that I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. branding we are not going behind. Branding we are going more aggressive and aggressive. But now uh, we change our branding and now to, to, uh, to focus uh, up to we are now want to expand our uh, bigger sections, bigger tire and color files. We are more focusing on this type of products. Like we have coffee oxygen plants or. Hospitals, by, uh, I think we will still meet with Dalat. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, if and everyone, if I request you to go to slide number 26, that's what we are referring to in our presentation. But uh, we are now we have a uh, good uh, number of inquiries with us, and uh, this is also very helpful to government, India, government of India, to help in Corona. 
we are targeting to start uh, hospitals of uh, almost 500 beds in three months and uh, oxygen plants within 15 days. And we have uh, we received uh, we, we orders also. We are getting started uh, receiving order also. So we are w working on this type of things uh, too much. And, uh, and in this process, I, we are very hopeful to this may help us help us to increase the volume of bigger sections there. So, so Madhav, just to add here, like if you see last two quarters, we have been spending around eight to nine crores uh, of expense um, uh, per quarter. That was a hundred when it was in FI20 before the pandemic hit. So, uh, so as the quarters got normalized, we are uh, back on spending eight nine crores per quarter of expense. Over and above, what we are trying to do is the uh, the the uh, the the targeted branding, targeted marketing for our exclusive products. Got it. Understood. Okay. Thank you so much. All the Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallav Agarwal from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, we just had a question on you know the impact of the higher steel prices. So, are we seeing some pushback in terms of demand? Uh, you know, except or are people accepting these uh, you know high steel prices? Yeah, there, there is some so like it's in the some uh, some sectors there is a de de demand uh, pull uh, pull back because of the secondary steel is also very cheap. So we, we are playing the primary steel. So there is some heat in the market swing. I think which I I can say is our primary steel structure market of in India is close to two million ton is now swing to 1.7 1.6 million ton. But uh, we, uh, we are managing to so to take the market share, increasing our market share from 40 to 50. Now I think we are almost cross 60 percent. So we are covering from there. But there is a pressure in the some sectors. There is a pressure due to the steel price hike. So, so you know, if I compare, as you said, if I compare with the second peers who are probably using the patra or scrap, so. What would be, you know, the cost, uh, you know, basically advantage that they would be having compared to primary players? Uh, yeah, there's too much difference between Patra and the primary steel. I think the difference is almost 10,000 rupees per ton. Which is like 10-12%. Uh, sure. So, and the margin, margin itself, or the EBITDA spread itself is, you know, 4 to 5,000 rupees per ton. So, in that context, Quite significant. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so thank you. And it's also just on um, so what would be our capex guidance for the next two years, and you know any uh, debt to EBITDA. I mean, now we are net debt, almost net debt free, but any net debt to EBITDA targets that we have in you know uh, over the long term. Our our target is close to 20 to 25 percent of the EBITDA margin as a capex fund. Yeah, for the capex. Sure. Okay. And uh, I mean, as you said, because of the lockdown, maybe this year there will not be any volume guidance versus our normal 15, 20 percent. No, 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 no. We, we are not afraid from the lockdown. We're just uh, waiting for our term. I'm uh, still hopeful. Keep, we are uh, uh, almost uh, achieve our numbers, very close to numbers. Okay, so, so can you assume so that this year, I mean, despite the lockdown, we'll, you know, we'll have probably a 10-15% volume growth in FI22 over FI21? Still, if there is no third wave, we can manage it. Sure. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just two questions. So firstly, on the CapEx, which the earlier participant was asking. Uh, so basically, you say 20, 20 percent of FDI is your annual budget. Uh, that that basically translates to about 175 crores a year. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And on the right plant, uh, what is the total CapEx we plan for? No, as in total CapEx as in? And then I thought the total capacity planned is about 900,000 to about a million tons. Phase one would be about 500,000 uh, tons, as we said. Total plan is going to 4 million tons across the group. 
like to, today we are 2.6 million ton in the next 2 3 years we are uh, targeting uh, to achieve 4 million ton okay so basically if i look at march 22 uh, we will will be close to 2.6 you know so we'll increase our utilization close to close to 3 million ton so rahul uh, rahul right now we are at 2.6 million ton there are two mills which are being added 200,000 ton of 500 by 500 square diameter and 200,000 ton of color coated tube. This will take our capacity to 3.0 million ton by FI22. And then uh, we have uh, further expansion plans, uh, which is budgeted in 25% of EBITDA as CAPEX expense. So that will take our capacity to 4.0 million ton over the next two, three years. Got it. Uh, any, any, any specific clarity would you provide physical PCL in terms of capacity additions? Any thoughts? So, uh, so the product basket is going to be, remain in uh, the value-added products, uh, new new market creation, and within the existing portfolio where we think uh, we require geographical expansion, um, right? So we'll set up uh, new mills there. So it'll be it'll be mix of brownfield expansion and uh, and uh, new product addition. Okay, got that. The second question was on EBITDA per ton. So you know when I look at look back five years, fiscal 17 to 21. The bid up per ton moves between 3600 to 4200 per ton. Now, this year you've exited at 474750 almost, and our average for this year was about 4200. Why, is, you know, given your increase in value added product share as well as the new Raipur CapEx is also a high margin business, uh, you know, this 5000 per ton of target, you know, Sanjay, you're also talking about six, seven thousand per ton into next three years. Uh, no, no, not, not overall of the year, for the right for the new project. For the new project only, okay. okay. Yeah, 6,000, this, this, this our 2.6 million ton, we are targeting 5,000 this ton. Okay, got it. So, what role does the higher steel price play here? As in if, let's say, there is a 31 correction in steel prices, what really happens to this number? Any sensitivity? In, uh, now, now we have a very less stocks in very less inventory we are carrying. We are carrying almost 15 days or 14 days or 20 days, less than 20 days inventory. And uh, six, seven days, uh, two, eight days, we have an order book also in our hand. So 10, 12 days inventory, I don't think so. Uh, give me any major hit or major gain. Got it. So only difference is between inventory gain and losses. Otherwise, this is Irrespective of the steel price movement. Inventory gain or loss is not big. Ten, twelve days in the stock, what inventory gain will be? What loss will be? Sahi baat hai, sahi baat. Hai. Hai, sir, Rahul, 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 that's what we have done over the last two, three years. That uh, how we are making our system shock proof. Uh, okay, by becoming more efficient, uh, by keeping lower inventory uh, in absolute terms, and uh, and converting uh, commodity into into our value added products at at uh, at much faster rate. In, in much efficient and effective manner. So, so, so this reduces the overall risk of any fluctuation in the steel prices when, uh, when we are sitting on such low inventory levels. I got that. Thank you so much and all the best. Thanks for answering questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sujit Jain from ASK Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Yeah, Sanjay ji and team, congratulations. And very delighted to see the OP per ton. Uh, Sanjay ji, you have told me that in the last quarter, that the achievement will not go down. So uh, you achieved that. So congratulations. Uh, my, um, uh, my question is, my question is about um, uh, the large players um, uh, such as JSW and Tata. Um, in terms of structural tools. Uh, what is their, uh, you know, market share or their volume that would be there? Um, Tata Pravesh, uh, which would be in competition with Tricot, I believe. Um, uh, so if we do a volume of 2,31,000, which I believe is the highest in that particular segment, uh, how much, uh, you know, Tata's would be or any other large company would be in terms of volume in that segment? Uh, and uh, one last question is on uh, the dividend policy you have spoken in the last uh, you know quarter uh, that you will finalize the policy about cash buyback uh, dividend etc now that the cash flows are very strong uh, have you finalized that policy and if you can you know share some uh, uh, views on that 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द वाउ जो टाटा प्रवेश एंड टाटा डोर फ्रेम ये इट्स वेरी क्लियर कि हमारा और उनका जो प्रोडक्ट जो ये डेफिनेस बहुत डिफरेंट है दे आर इन द टोटल सोल्यूशन एंड हाई हाई एंड हाई एंड उनका एक डोर फ्रेम का सोल्यूशन जो है लगभग आई थिंक सो मे बी आई करेक्ट बीस से पच्चीस हजार रुपए का पड़ता है आई एम इन द वेरी लो एंड लो एंड हमारा एक डोर फ्रेम का सोल्यूशन मुश्किल से सात आठ हजार रुपए का पड़ता है दे आर टारगेटिंग ये टायर वन सिटी आई एम टारगेटिंग टायर टू टायर थ्री रूरल एरिया सिटीज तो और प्लस हमारा और उनका डिजाइन भी बहुत डिफरेंट है तो वी हैव जीरो परसेंट कम्पिटिशन विथ टाटा प्रवेश हमारा उनसे कोई भी कम्पिटिशन नहीं है नंबर टू अबाउट द डिविडेंट पॉलिसी वी आर स्टिल ऑन अवर मार्क डिविडेंट पॉलिसी हमको जो हमने मेंटेन कर रखी थी वही करनी है बट ड्यू टू द करोना टाइम एंड द सम कैटैक्स एंड द बाई बैक प्लानिंग तो इसके कारण वी आर जस्ट डेफिंग फॉर the two years that our dividend policy last year we have skipped and this year we skipped now i think from this year we are on the track sure thank you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of amit jaiswani from stallion asset please go ahead hello Yeah. Hi sir, my question sir, hi sorry 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 I was uh, on mute. Hi sir, my question is about uh, the growth part. So you've got the balance sheet 100% right now. Uh, you have paid off debt whatever you said uh 3 4 quarters back you've delivered on that. Uh my question is sir on the growth part because that is now the most important part that will create the mass, the most uh, value. for apl apollo uh, sir uh, you've been saying 10 15% growth but uh, sanjay ji uh, you've typically been growing at 20% around that on the volume side do you think that kind of growth is possible for the next 4 5 years and since you've been increasing capacity by 50 60% now uh, we are at 16 million uh, 1.6 million tons ye 3 saal mein sir kahan tak jayega बॉस अगर आप मेरे से पूछोगे वी हैव ए विजन फॉर टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव फोर मिलियन टन गॉट इट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव वी हैव विजन ऑफ फोर मिलियन टन उसके हिसाब से हम कैपेसिटी धीरे धीरे स्लोली स्लोली इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं विदाउट हैंडलिंग आवर बैलेंस शीट एंड कैश फ्लो एंड रहा जो ये प्रोजेक्ट में हमारा पिछले डेढ़ साल से ग्रोथ जो हमारा एफ आई नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी को नहीं क्रॉस कर पा रहा है उसमें सम रीजन से मैंने आपका एक तो सबसे बड़ा पैंडेमिक कोरोना टाइम हो गया कुछ स्टील्स के भी प्राइसेस के अपडाउंस ने भी दिमाग को हिट किया था लाइक स्टील प्राइसेस बढ़े तो बहुत सारे प्रोजेक्ट टूटे हुए हैं बट जहाँ कहीं पर भी जाके ये सब चीजें रीनेगोशिएट होंगी और प्रोजेक्ट्स चालू होंगे तो आई डोंट थिंक हिंदुस्तान में डिमांड इज एनी प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू टू डे इंडिया इज ऑलमोस्ट स्टील कन्वेंशन ऑफ हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी मिलियन टन के आसपास स्टील कन्वेंशन पे है जिसका हम बात करें तो एट टू टेन परसेंट ट्यूब सेक्टर है मैं टेन मिलियन टन के आसपास टोटल ट्यूब आप इसमें सारे टाइप के ट्यूब मिला हुए टोटल टेन मिलियन टन के आसपास ट्यूब है नाउ दी गवर्नमेंट ऑल द एक्सपर्ट्स आर थिंकिंग की दिस इज गोइंग टू टू टच वेरी सून टू टू हंड्रेड मिलियन टन इन चाइना इज ऑलमोस्ट क्लोज टू थाउजेंड टन थाउजेंड मिलियन टन तो अगर इंडिया में जिस हिसाब से स्टील में अगर ग्रोथ आएगी तो टू भी उसी हिसाब से अगर दो सौ मिलियन टन का दस परसेंट बीस मिलियन टन हो जाता है बीस मिलियन टन का अगर आज हमने यहाँ पर अपना हमारा टोटल ओवरऑल ट्यूब का हम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ये मार्केट कैप्चर करते हैं तो आप ये समझो कि बीस मिलियन टन का ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट पांच मिलियन टन तो मैथोमेटिक ही पहुंच जाएंगे राइट 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 Right sir right sir right sir please thank you so much for whatever sir you are doing you're doing a great job and please continue doing uh, this thing thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jatin damania from kotak securities please go ahead congratulations sir on the great set of number so just on the stack now since we have started the second year and in month of april and may we have seen the impact of the lockdown so taking that into consideration what sort of volume we are seeing in the first quarter and what sort of profitability we are estimating 
first quarter we are thinking our volume is maybe depend on the lockdown but uh, between 70 to 90 percent Seventy percent, or maybe we cross ninety percent. But it depends on the when the lockdown opening. If the lockdown opening next few days, so mm-hmm. we can close to we we can close to ninety percent. Or other if the lockdown go longer, so maybe we are close to seventy to between eighty percent. And sir, how how was the trend in the month of April? Mr. Dhavania, so there is a disturbance coming from your line. Request you to mute your line while the management answers your question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. April we are on track. April we have no problem. Okay. And uh, margin wise, we are on the safer side. We have no problem at all. So we can we continue to deliver what we delivered in the Q4, or it will be uh, marginally lower than that. I think uh, higher than this. Okay, higher than this. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from ICICI Prudential. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, all, and uh, congratulations on a great year. Uh, sir, I, most of my questions have been answered. Just a couple of. We talked about the hospitals, oxygen, and the cold storage. if you could just give some idea about the kind of volume of tick that can bring and the current uh, what are what is the order book looking like current or this exercise we just started to do few months back if you see the in the economic times and a lot of newspaper we also giving a very good ad, ads full page ad also now we have a, a order book is very less right now i think uh, we have order in the tunnel i know in about the tunnel in local square foot ko me bhi samajh nahi aata but tunnel mein hamare paas 2000 3000 ton ke orders honge abhi but I, we are very hopeful ki jaisa hamara ek uh, ek state government se baat chal raha hai i can't disclose the name because it not yet the order is finalized so he is uh, behind us for uh, almost 400 crore of order size single order size of 400 crore इसी तरह हमारा बुलेट ट्रेन में काफी हमारी बातचीत चल रही है तो जिस हिसाब से वहां से सिग्नल आ रहा है सिग्नल इज वेरी गुड बट जब तक जमीन पर नहीं उतरेगा और वी आर वर्नी वन सब कैन सप्लाई दिस मटेरियल अदर देन इम्पोर्ट्स तो जब तक ये चीजें जमीन पर नहीं उतरेगी आई कैन से एनी थिंग बिकॉज इफ यू सी द डेवलप कंट्री कंट्री मार्केट लाइक यूएसए आई स्टडी लॉट ऑफ वहां पर जो हमारे तरह के प्लेयर है वहां पर लाइक ए प्लेयर ऑफ जैकल मैन इंडस्ट्रीज He is making 2.4 million ton of tubes there. Uska usme se 2.4 million ton me se 1.3 million ton ke aasos 50 percent is bigger sections. So India ko develop pura me kitna time lagega? We don't know. Some of people are doing very good job in this industry. Like Tata Steel is doing very well uh, to develop this market. We are doing very well in the, uh, to develop this market. Or koi ek aada player bhi hamare saath jude ya ye market develop hogi. तो एवरीबॉडी इज होल इंडस्ट्री इज बेनिफिशरी उसमें जो हम थोड़ा ज्यादा कॉम्पिटिटिव है तो हमको तो हम ज्यादा मैंने फोकस हुए हुए हैं तो हमको ज्यादा बेनिफिट मिलेगा बट फॉर द इंडस्ट्री इंडस्ट्री दिस इज वेरी वेरी आई कैन से गुड सिग्नल फॉर द फ्यूचर यू विल बी डीलिंग विद द गवर्नमेंट और विद द कॉन्ट्रेक्टर नो वी आर डीलिंग विद द कॉन्ट्रेक्टर बट डिजाइन ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ डिजाइन वी आर डीलिंग विद द गवर्नमेंट्स government first approve the designs then they uh, give the contact, contact to their uh, contractor the bidding. and uh, uh, through bidding then the contractors give us the orders so now it is like it is like uh, telling the government to construct in a new way okay uh, hmm. right now they may be constructed they may be constructing using cement and concrete or they may be constructing using uh, a conventional long steel products this is a third technology what we are promoting is uh, this is a third technology what we are promoting is uh, 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 doing the construction using uh, structural steel tubes right so 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 here are like two three uh, channel partners who are involved one is the government or the developer who owns the project then there are the project consultants who are the structural engineers and architects and then there is the contractor who is going to take the project for the execution so so what we are doing is that we are reaching out to the government to the developer 
then we are uh, reaching out to their consultants and we are making them believe that if you switch to tubular construction, you're going to save at least 10 to 20% on the project cost basis, right? That, uh, that encourages them to, to use tubular construction, right? So, so all of this exercise we started in last few quarters and, uh, and, um, and now that we are talking to a lot of private developers, a lot of uh, uh, state, agencies, state government agencies, central government agencies, so you'll see that over the next few quarters, uh, there's going to be a good uh, order book that will build up. And once there is clear demonstration of one or two, three buildings, then uh, th then it will be like uh, wildfire and uh, we'll like to leverage it out very, very aggressively. And this, so the first milestone is basically the government approval, which you're saying we have got in some places. Yes, yes. Uh, government approval comes when government consultant who can be a structural engineer or an architectural firm they also agree to it so first they agree then the government uh, agrees and, uh, and 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 then yes uh, once it is in the design then the epc contractor has uh, has no authority to change that design then by default he has to build that building on tube and uh, and the kind of sizes uh, skus what are being imbibed um, that gives us like a uh, good uh, opportunity to have a uh, line market share there. And Gaurav, mm -hmm. the second, uh, second thing also, now India is the net exporter of steel. For, uh, earlier years, India is the net exporter of steel. Now India is net ex exporter of steel. In the future, this is also very helpful to India, like China is withdrawing from the export market. So, in the tube segment, we see that we are to export our opportunity a lot. And in the bigger sections, we are getting very good response. Once our 500 square miles started, we are a lot of Canadian and US people are in touch with us to take this material. So, once when we deliver the numbers, then it's come to true. There is a difference between the lips and the cup and lips, which is difference in the but we are very hopeful to have to lay any lips. Okay, so that is another area, then we need a detailed discussion later. But uh, in terms of just this quarter, if I have to look at Jan, Feb, whatever volume, we, if, we, if we would have done a normal quarter, let's say Q4, uh, what kind yeah. of volume we could have touched? So we are almost close to uh, half a million tons. We could have touched 500 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate. Please go ahead. Mr. Amar Moria, your line is unmuted. Please yeah. go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity uh, and congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Uh, firstly, sir, uh, just for the understanding, if you can help me, like, you know, you give the uh, breakup of all the volumes. So, uh, how do we calculate the value added? Like, you know, what all are included in the value added portion? So, Amar, there is a there is a clear slide uh, uh, slide number. I think uh, I had uh, Apollo bed, Apollo tripod, Apollo galvanized, Apollo structure, right, and the general structure. Yeah, so these are these are the products which are uh, so general structure is uh, commoditized and anything uh, apart from that is uh, value added where our margins are above four thousand per ton. Okay, so when we say that sixty percent is the value added, we are basically nulling of the general structure and rest all we are considering it as the value added, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, secondly, like you know, in terms of the a bit up per ton, like you know, this quarter also, despite the lower volume, uh, you know, we had been able to maintain our a bit per ton. 
So is it, and this is again in the rising uh, commodity prices environment. So is it fair to assume that once the prices start tapering down, uh, your EBITDA pattern would improve significantly because your ability to probably pass on or to retain the EBITDA would be higher? No. So, Amar, if you look at uh, our history, um, right, if you look at l last five year EBITDA per ton and you look at this steel price fluctuation, okay, there is no correlation you would find in our EBITDA per ton and steel prices. Very little correlation. Okay. Right. Um, 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 in FY 19 and 20, steel prices were going up, but we had a flat uh, EBITDA per ton. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, we were expanding our capacity, there was negative operating leverage. Uh, we had built up our capacities and economy wasn't doing well, so we had to do some push sales, right? If that was the case, then in 1920, uh, we had uh, we could have demonstrated much better EBITDA per ton, but we couldn't, right? So, so this uh, demonstrates that uh, there is very little correlation between the steel price fluctuation and our EBITDA per ton, um, right? And as our system is becoming more and more shockproof, by as we are becoming more efficient, more effective, and uh, keeping inventory levels low uh, with the existing invent inventory of 150 160000 tons uh, 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 doing monthly volume of m more than 160 170000 tons so so these are all the measures what we have been taking to uh, to make our system shock proof right so even historically you wouldn't see any uh, correlation between our ebitda per ton and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, steel fluctuation no, I I completely agree with that. What I was what I was trying to understand since the realization, uh, I mean, your uh, commodity has prices had gone up significantly. So does this like you know for us for a buyer overall price is increasing? Does this limit you to pass or improve your profitability? And given that once the commodity prices are declining, you can probably you know fully pass on your profitability to the dealer and distributor. I was trying to understand from understand from that perspective. Amar, Amar, see, steel being 75-80% of the value in our product, yes. right? And okay. Okay, if you follow, look at the Indian steel tube industry or you look at the global steel tube industry. Now, mm -hmm. can any player who is depending on 70-80% of, uh, of the total product value on single commodity, right, if it goes uh, plus minus 5%, can any player um, keep those margins uh, onto his chest? No, right? So he has to immediately pass it on. So this is the business mm -hmm. model which every company, whether in India or globally, uh, has been working on, right? So there is a clear path through within 10, 12 days of uh, any revision, whether upward or downward. And this is a trend which has been there for many, many years, and not only in India, but globally also. Got that, got that. And lastly, sir, what would be the current utilization? Right now, we there are almost uh, 2.6 uh, 2 so, million ton cash. Uh, on 1.6 na, mara. Yeah. So 1.6 divided by 2.6. Yeah. 60-65%. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir, and congratulations for such a fantastic uh, result in FI21. Sir, most of the questions have been asked, answered. So I just want one uh, uh, question on the merger. So, sir, any deadline uh, you would like to uh, give some clarity when the merger probably would happen? By, by, we, we, we are targeting it by uh, month of December, but it is also depend on the government authorities. Okay. So still, sir, the record that has not been finalized, right? No, 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 no. no. Not yet. It will be finalized in the last quarter, maybe. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir, and keep up the good work. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raj Mehta, from Raj Mehta Association. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, Sanjay, sir, very big congratulations. And you have delivered the excellent results. Sir, my question is, uh, for with respect to Opolo Tricot, uh, Opolo Tricot may capacity utilization normal levels pay Aiga, Silal, but uh, you have not catered to western part of India because the plants 
ईस्टर्न और साउथ पार्ट में ज्यादा था सो गोइंग फॉरवर्ड जब आप मे बी वी वी गेट दी मॉर्चर बाय डिसम्बर सो हाउ आर यू प्लानिंग टू कैटर टू दी प्लेसेज लाइक महाराष्ट्र और यू नो पुणे वेर देर इज अ बिग रिच रेसिडेंशियल रियल एस्टेट मार्केट सो इफ दैट पिक्स अप तो अवर प्रोडक्ट विल बी मोर यूटिलाइज इन दोज मार्केट थैंक यू मिस्टर मेहता फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ये नाउ आफ्टर द मर्जर वी हैव बिफोर वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ बॉन्डेशन बिटवीन द बोथ ऑफ द कंपनी बट नाउ वी आर फ्री टू पुट द एनी फैसिलिटी इन एनी वेयर इन इंडिया इन द एक्जिस्टिंग प्लांट तो नाउ वी आर प्लानिंग टू पुट अप मोर ट्रैको फैसिलिटीज इन रायपुर फ्रॉम द रायपुर वी कैन कैप्चर डिलीवर द ऑल इंडिया मार्केट so we are focusing now into that to plan to create the this type of facilities in uh, to ca- capture the other part of the uh, india sir but wo transportation mein zyada farak nahi padega agar raipur se raipur raipur is nearby the raw material to isliye usse zyada farak nahi padta hai okay and uh, opolo try called revenue and profitability is how much uh, as compared to apl opolo's total consolidated uh, profit and uh, revenue kya percentage hai at present at, at around it is contributing 15% to the ebitda and uh, 12% to the pac okay and are you expecting this to be at much a higher levels before the merger uh, maybe for 9 months this can go up to 20% on on EBITDA level because aapka margin on, uh, tricot business is higher compared to your normal value added products in APL. राज इतने अभी हमने अलग अलग वर्किंग नहीं की क्योंकि अब हम दोनों को एक कंपनी मांग के काम कर रहे हैं तो इतना हमने अलग अलग वर्किंग किया नहीं अभी तो वी कांट राइट नाउ वी कांट आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन ओके ओके नो इशू सर थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी दी अपॉर्चुनिटी रिटेल इन्वेस्टर को बहुत हार्डली चांस मिलता है सर कभी क्वेश्चन पूछने में एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी सर आपका एक खुशखबरी भी दूंगा आपके जो इन्वेस्टर रिलेशन है उनसे भी मेरी बात होती है इज बिन वेरी पोलाइट एंड ही एंसर वेरी नाइसली वेन आई आस्क क्वेश्चन थ्रू ई मेल एंड इवन थ्रू कॉल इट्स वेरी गुड टू Anubhav sir, Anubhav Gupta is doing that. Is very doing. Is doing it very greatly, sir. Just a uh, appreciation. This is their, this is their, their job. Our company company is doing. This is grateful for us. We are grateful to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Well, thanks Malika and thanks to IFL team for hosting us uh, for this call. Uh, thanks to all the uh, all the investors and uh, analysts uh, who joined us. Uh, please be safe. Uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of IFL Securities Limited that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.